Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. Now, today is a very, very special day. Okay, let me start by telling you that I am super, 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 super close to my nan, which is my mum's mum. Now, of course, this year has been particularly difficult for people who are in a situation where their loved ones are in care or are in sort of uh, residential homes or in nursing homes or those sort of types of scenarios where they are being looked after, where they're being cared for because of an illness such as dementia or Alzheimer's or things such as... <sighs> They need that little bit more support, they need that little bit more care to be able to live in society and to be able to live their lives. Now my nan is an absolutely incredible, incredible, inspirational, lovely, amazing, absolutely breathtakingly amazing person ever. My nan is absolutely my whole world. She is truly, truly inspirational and just literally words fail me. My nan is such a special lady. Now, this year has been, of course, particularly difficult for everybody, but anyone who will know, um, if you have a loved one who, that horrible dreaded feeling of not being able to look after them or not being able to sort of give them or offer them what they need to be able to live with the illness, what they have, um, is heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. And of course, with this year of COVID affecting so, so much of our lives, it's been horrific to one day be able to see your loved one. And I have literally gone from seeing my nan all the time, every couple of days and every week. And then the week's rolling by. And as the seasons change, enjoying that with my nan and literally my nan's very, very fortunate where she is. She's in an amazing, amazing, it's a nursing home, but I, I don't call it that. It's sort of like a retirement home for people with Alzheimer's. And they look after my nan incredibly well. Um, all the staff there are absolutely lovely. The lady who dresses and looks after my nan, she is an absolutely, she is a gift from God. And she helps my nan remain as my nan and look exactly the same as she always wanted to. Um, but of course, outside of all of this, it was my mum, my absolutely amazing, amazing cherished mum, who of course it's her mum. So she keeps my, my nan up together and looking how she would want to be and all these lovely, amazing things in her room and perfumes, fine clothes and all sorts and keeping my nan up together and her hair up together, which was so, so important for her. And then of course, bang, COVID struck and this was all ripped away from us, to be quite honest with you, overnight. And I have been able to see my nan through a distance of sort of, uh, to be honest, to be outside under like a gazebo with a table in front of us, somebody there all the time, making sure I don't touch my nan, having a mask over, gloves, apron, the lot. And it's been, as a lot of people around the world will share that view with me, it's been very traumatic, very, very difficult, and it's been horrific. Um, and I remember celebrating my nan's every, in recent years, we have been at my nan's birthday every single year. This year, my nan turned 94, a very special occasion. We weren't able to share that with her. I seen her for a glass, which absolutely ripped my heart out. And my mum was actually in tears. It's her mum. And my, my mum spent most of the day on my nan's birthday this year crying. What do I say to that? And it's usually my brothers, myself, my twin brother, and my mum who spend her birthday with her. Easter, couldn't even see Nan at all. But I always had the hope in the back of my mind that Christmas, it would all be okay. And I think we all have had that. And we've all held on to that. That Christmas, COVID would be a thing of the past. Um, and that Christmas would be a time as I absolutely love, and of course everybody loves, that time of coming together. Christmas is all about cherishing family, all about that special connection of coming together, sharing appreciation, love, affection, everything which, it, which family stands for. And then of course, as we got into September, I thought to myself, things aren't changing. This, this, uh, I have a fear that this isn't gonna happen. And then, of course, October happened and things haven't changed. If anything, it got worse. And then November had happened. And I thought to myself, this isn't going to, this isn't going to, this isn't going to be the same this year. It's not going to be the same. It's still going to be special. 
but it's certainly going to be different. And then throughout the summer, touching up on that, by the way, on the summer, I was able to see my nan as a distance visit. But then, of course, shortly after, uh, a couple of months ago, now we went into this second, uh, my, my nan's cabin went into a second lockdown much earlier before we here in the UK went into a second lockdown. So it's felt like this endless sort of lockdown. And of course, approaching December, I really thought this was all going to be behind us, but of course it's not. So in March, I wasn't able to sort of see my nan for weeks and weeks and weeks and months on end. And then we were allowed about six weeks of visits. So I was seeing her now as much as I could, telling her how much I loved her, telling, taking her all these different things. But of course, behind a mask and an apron, anybody will know that if you have a loved one with Alzheimer's or dementia, you need to hug that person. You need to be there. You need to get right up in their face and, and really, really sort of embrace and get across who you are and then of course it clicks because with Alzheimer's it's very much like a door opens a door closes there they can be there and then the next minute they can it can be a bit cloudy but then my nan comes back and um it's difficult it's difficult so then of course shortly after we were allowed this six eight weeks of visits I think it was about six to eight weeks they literally snatched it away from us again that my nan had to go into, and the whole of my nan's care home had to go into uh, the strictest lockdown possible to keep everybody safe. And let me just say, I am absolutely, wholeheartedly, so, so from the bottom of my heart to the Lord above, thankful that they have kept all of the residents and my nan safe. She is 94. She is in the most vulnerable group ever. She's 94 and a half now. And my nan does not as much, bless her heart, get a cold. But do you know what this is all about today? finally, the previous, so it's Sunday, but the Monday literally gone, so a week ago, my mum was able to finally see my nan, and she was an absolute picture of health, my nan was absolutely amazing, and the hairdresser had been, and I talk about hair quite a lot on my channel, but from, that's probably where I get it from, for my nan was literally, and still is, a film star, growing up, when my nan entered a room, it was literally like a film star, this huge sort of glamorous style, this glamorous lady, very small and tiny lady, very petite, would often walk in to a room with the pearls, the huge back combed coloured hair, the makeup. My nan just literally was this glamorous, glamorous lady, always. And throughout her journey and battle with Alzheimer's, my mum, bless her heart, has been able to keep her. But that I've helped as well keep my nan as this lady was, and that's how my nan wanted to be. And um, I think that's where my mum gets it from, why she's so glamorous and things as well. And um, literally last Monday, my mum said that it was really, really important. And the pro previous week to that was really, really important that we, we kept up and we got in touch with my nan's hairdresser and at the care home where she's based, that um, they would come in and do my nan's hair. And um, this has happened regularly. My nan has her hair done every week. It's a huge, huge thing to my nan. Always was. She always said, bless her heart, um, never, ever let me die a grey haired old lady. There's nothing wrong with grey hair at all, but my nan, bless her, did not want that at all. And um, literally days before my mum got to see her, my nan had this all done. So when my mum, bless her, got to see my nan on Monday, the previous Monday, last Monday rather, she looked stunning. My nan was really, really well. She was healthy. She knew who my mum was through the glass. And because of they haven't actually, my nan's care haven't actually received their tests to be able for us to be able to go in and see my nan in her in her surroundings, in her care home. My mum had to go in and see uh, what's called as like a, 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 a visit in a room of a glass room. So difficult, very, very difficult. But of course, my nan was touching the glass. My mum was. So they had that really special bond, which they've had throughout their whole life. They're really like sisters, best friends, to be honest, all throughout growing up. They really were um, and still are. And um, such a special bond. And um, my nan was absolutely incredible, incredible. So my mum, hugely, because in my nan's care home, we're only allowed one person per family to be able to see their loved one because of COVID and to keep it really, really under wraps and, and really structured and well looked after. Well, my mum absolutely managed and I cannot thank her enough. I'm always in awe. My mum is such an incredible, incredible lady. Um, and she'd be able, she was able to get me a range of visits for me um, to be able to see my nan. And that's what I've done today. The management of my nan's care home, they are such, such lovely people and they have done their utmost for all the residents and for my nan. And you know what, today, 
It's really special because not in a pod visit, not in, and I say a pod like in this purpose-built room with a glass sort of screen in between, I was actually able to, with gloves, with an apron, with a mask, with all sorts of sprays and all sorts of things on my hands and things to keep everything sort of the prevention of the virus, of course. At the Christmas season, my only visit, because unfortunately I've I'm not going to be able to see my nan at Christmas Eve, but I understand that because we are really structured um, in my nan's care home visits because every resident has to have a visit from their family and rightfully so. And all my love and best wishes to them. And um, everybody who's in my nan's care home has Alzheimer's or, or, or a form of dementia. And um, so I absolutely understand that. But I'm just so thankful that my mum got to see my nan this Christmas season. I have been able to today and you know what I literally I'm a 27 year old man and I was literally nearly in tears as I approached my nan's care home in the car now my nan's manager of the care home met me I put on all the protection equipment and everything and as I entered into the home I seen my nan and since March I've seen her yes quite a lot Throughout the summer, for about a six to eight week period, I've seen my nan a lot, but I wasn't able to get near her, touch her, hug her, talk to her, anything like that. And yes, okay, I wasn't able to hug my nan until today. But with the gloves on, just the simple things, just the simple things. On the back of my nan, as I walked in, they were they were moving my nan in a wheelchair into her room. And she has a beautiful room. It's like an apartment. We're very, very fortunate. Very large room. And I've always kept it and changed it with the seasons for Easter, for Christmas. And she has all these ornaments like at home, um, pictures on the walls of all of her family. It's beautiful. And with sort of cushions and covers and things on the bed and on the chair and everything. And it, and it is lovely. And as I walked in, it was exactly like how I left the room in March, it was well looked after. And as I walked behind my nan, and first of all, my nan was at the door. As I walked in, there's sort of like this foyer area, and my nan was there, and then they moved my nan into a room. And when I see my nan's face, it lit up. And I knew straight away it was it was a worry for me that my nan wasn't gonna know who I was, because I've always seen my nan all the time, each week, each week, each week, several times to try and keep it there with my nan's mind that I'm still there. Because my nan, my nan is like a second mum to me. She is absolutely incredible in this world, in this life. I've been blessed to have two mums, I always think. And as I walked in, my nan's face lit up. And then they moved my nan into her room where I then went. And from the back of my nan, I just thought, wow, straight away. Literally, my nan's posture, it hadn't deteriorated. How much my nan's hair had grown. It was literally all down, literally to her shoulder blades. A 94-year-old lady, this lovely brown golden hair, which I just absolutely treasured to give my nan a hug. And, and sort of, just the thing like, you can... You can, those smells, can't you, like my nan's perfume or her hair or the, the feel of my nan's sort of tight hug. And and unfortunately, I wasn't able to give my nan a hug at all today, but I really, really wanted to. But um, I was able to hold my nan's hand through me wearing gloves. And just my nan holding my hand, I literally felt like a little boy. And we laughed and I talked to my nan and straight away asked her how she was, because of course with dementia, um, with my nan having Alzheimer's, I can call my nan and I can speak with her on the phone, but it's literally like that I'm, I'm, I'm just talking to the manager of the care home because my nan can't sort of put that together. I have to be in front of her. So I asked my nan how she was straight away and she said that she was fine and I thought that we've gone for so many years with this illness and my nan would always be stressed out she'd want to go home this wasn't her and you know what now she's just so content and she's just so content that's the only word i can find that she's just comfortable she looked so so well so comfortable she was dressed up to the nines as glamorous as ever um my nan does not look 94 at all you'd think she was 20 years younger um and it was just lovely. She laughed. We smiled. Um, my nan even done this sort of like little game and I was holding her hand and all of a sudden, I think when she was so happy, she started doing this on my hand and I started doing it back. So there we were for a couple of minutes. My nan and my hand was going like this and it was, it was so sweet. And it was, and it was, it really, really made my heart sing, to be honest. I know it sounds cheesy, but I don't really care. It literally made my heart sing. And that's, that's my Christmas now. Do you know what? Christmas is so, so special, but do you know what? For me, that's my Christmas gift. That is my Christmas gift. My nan being there, holding my nan's hand. And um, 
honestly, even now, I just feel so welled up, so overjoyed, and, um, yeah, wow, just holding my nan's hand, and when I, when we had, I, it was only a 15 minute visit they could allow me, and I had a mask on, but straight away, um, it was just lovely, that bond just clicked as though it had been switched back on, and my nan knew who I was, and I know that because of that look, when my nan looks at me, I know when she knows me and when she doesn't, and, um, oh, just amazing, absolutely amazing, and it really, really was, it was so, so special, it was all of those emotions, and when I left my nan, which was heartbreaking, but when I left my nan, I felt so much more, because I'm going through some health problems and things at the moment as well, but I just felt so much more, sort of, life is to be embraced, Bradley, get on with it, and, um, and yeah, I could really feel my nan sort of pushing me on to sort of keep going, keep going with things, and um, I said to my nan that, I hope that you enjoy some, that you get to enjoy an aspect of Christmas, because of course it's all different for us this year, and I never ever say to my nan, because if she has Alzheimer's of course, I never ever say have the most amazing Christmas, because of course naturally it's not going to be like things were before, but I always say, I said to my nan actually today, I really hope, and as I do each year, I really hope that you get to enjoy some of Christmas, or an aspect of Christmas which you're enjoying now, and I wished her a Merry Christmas, and that I loved her very much, and to stay strong, and to keep going, and to keep pushing on, and I said that I loved her with all my heart, and that I would be along to see her soon, as soon as I can, um, and I'll be seeing her as soon as I can, and um, yeah, it was really magical, really amazing, and as I say, if I didn't have Christmas Day, or if I didn't have Christmas Eve now, that would be the perfect Christmas for me, being able to see my nan after all that time. So for me, Christmas is made before I've even had it. Perfect. Done. Amazing. So I just wanted to show this on my channel because my nan is such a huge part of my life. Um, she is incredible. She absolutely is. Um, yeah, what a person, what a lady. She is truly inspirational, incredible for all those, all these wonderful things. She's always been there in my life. She's always been one of the first people I've, I've, I've turned to whenever anything sort of happened in my life, whether it's been good, bad, health, whether it's been studying worries, whether it's been career worries, whether it's been, I remember even saying to my nan about who I was taking to the prom, a girl called Alice, who I was, I was so excited to be taking to the prom. I remember telling my nan that. I remember, because I loved to sing, I remember showing, telling Nan that I was really, really embarrassed. And I remember my Nan wanted to hear me sing, and I remember my Nan sat in her lounge, she had a very big house, and I remember seeing my Nan. Um, I remember her asking me to sing, and I remember going out into my Nan's kitchen, being really, really shy and singing. <laughs> and um, all those wonderful things I remember, actually, when we were walking home once, and it started to rain, and all these lovely things which I remember. But... Um, I remember taking my jacket off and giving my nan and covering my nan up, thinking my nan's older, I don't want my nan to get pneumonia or anything, but, um, yeah, and even at 15, um, 15, 14, 15, going to cross the road, catch hold of nanny's hand, my nan would say, and thinking, oh god, I'm a teenager, but my nan always thought that I was a small child, but, um, yeah, all very, very special, very, very special indeed, so for me, as you can probably Thus from this, that Christmas is absolutely already absolutely amazing, and, and that's it, if that's all I had for Christmas, that would be the hugest, biggest gift ever to receive today, such a special, special time, and then coming to see my mum who waited in the car with my brother who dropped me there, I was so happy to think that her mum was so well and so happy and that she'd seen her this Christmas season and had such an amazing time as well. Okay, thank you very, very much for sharing that with me. As you know that my nan is, if you followed my channel, my nan is a huge part of my life. All of my family is, my mum, my dad, my three brothers, my nieces, my nephews, my aunts, my uncles, all of my family. Thank you very much indeed for sharing this with me. I hope you have an amazing, amazing festive season. A very, very happy Christmas to you. And until next time, Merry Christmas, stay safe, and I'll be seeing you real soon. Bye-bye now. Bye now.